God, I'm stupid. Anyways, welcome back, folks. Your man Porter here. We return for another one. <laughs> this time around, we're going to be playing with some transmissions. So, what I've got here is an Azen AR5, the same kind that was found in uh, an 05 Colorado or a, a Solstice, for example. They're a five speed transmission, 27 spline input shaft. They're supposed to be relatively strong, right? So a common modification that I've read about anyways is that people try to put these behind LS engines. So I went ahead and got what I needed to do this modification. All this is made possible um, because of this plate here. I'll go over this in a little second here, but in a nutshell, these transmissions never had a small block Chevy or an LS pattern, well, uh, bell housing to it, right? So with the aid of this plate, we can uh, mount, basically it's an adapter, so we mount it to the transmission, then we can put just a regular bell housing from a uh, 4L60 or a 4L80 or uh, you know what I'm getting at here, right? There's a whole pile of parts on the table, so how about we go ahead and get this thing together? So this is the adapter plate in question. Um, it's a really nicely machined piece of, I'm gonna say 5 8 aluminum. The reason it's that thick is to accommodate basically the difference for the output shaft. So what I mean by that, if we had a thinner piece to put on here, the output shaft might not be all the way into the bearing and then we would have issues there, right? So this is to the right thickness to accommodate for that. And on top of that, we have a spacer for the throwout bearing. So in a nutshell, this plate bolts on to where the bell housing from the Colorado used to be and allows us to bolt in this 4L60E bell housing that I have here. All these parts come from a gentleman that I found on Facebook. He calls himself Red Eagle Race Parts. Go ahead and check him out. He... An amazing feller, I'm not going to lie. He gave me all the instructions I needed. And they're very, very detailed on top of that. And what I really like about them, if you don't want to go all the way measuring everything, you don't have to. I'll go into that into uh, a little bit further on there when we start putting stuff together. Taking a little break here. I am dying. It is some hot. If you guys are still there and you enjoy this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That stuff helps me out tremendously, you have no idea. And uh, if you just like this kind of content in general, you're not quite sure what's up, hey, subscribe. Look at the past tense videos, past tense videos? Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get back to it. I went ahead and I bought all of the hardware that I was going to need for this because I didn't know exactly the thread pitch and all that stuff. So. If I'm not mistaken, the normal kit would come usually with this portion here. And then I bought all the uh, mounting hardware or hardware accessory kit, or I forget exactly how he called it, I do apologize. But when you go to order, he asks you basically if you want the rest of the hardware. I just opted for it, a lot easier in my case. If you guys notice, I still have all the fasteners from the previous bell housing. Uh, in this application here, I'm actually not gonna need them. So I'm gonna go ahead, first of all, remove this, remove the clutch cylinder. I got a brand new bearing on here, whatever. Um, and then we'll get going from that point. These parts are really, really well machined. Uh, honestly, I have nothing to, to complain about, except in the shipping. So. In the shipping, there's, uh, there's a lot of tape involved in there. Mine had to go uh, quite a ways to get there, so in a way, I'm pretty happy with it. The only problem I have is there's so much adhesive that I gotta remove now, and there's still chunks of tape that are kinda hidden there, and you know, I guess it's a complaining with my belly full, I guess, but uh, it's just the one point that I noticed, the one thing I noticed which is kind of annoying. So there's detailed instructions that come with this kit, right? Um, I'm doing them a little bit backwards because 
The first part of the instructions says to prepare the bell housing. I wanted to do the other way around and mount this to the transmission so it could help me in preparing the bell housing because you have to drill holes into it and stuff. I'll go into it a little bit later on. One thing that you have to do though is to keep the dowels that's supposed to go into here. Unfortunately, I lost one. Not a big deal though. I just took a piece of rod, ground it down a little bit, and then I got a dowel. Yeah, a little bit too tight. I'll just turn it down a little bit more. So we're back. Um, there's a little bit of messing around there. Not the end of the world. It's important to have the dowels because these two dowels is actually what takes the torque, if you want, from the engine to the transmission. The bolts do take some of it, yes, but the dowels take way more of it. So, gonna go ahead, bolt this thing down, and yeah, I might have to put some, a little bit of Loctite. Not a bad idea, Loctite's always a good call. So from the instruction, first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the four socket head bolts, or correction, five socket head bolts. So there's one here, 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 there, and there. They're countersunk, right? It's just to try to make a bit more room uh, inside the, the transmission, so. All right, next bit. You could use your factory bolts to go back into these four holes up here. I happen to buy the fastener hard, or the hardware kit, like I mentioned, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use those. One step I did forget to mention, before I put this plate on, the face of the transmission was uh, scraped with a blade, so try to take some of the debris off and whatnot. So it is actually specifically mentioned uh, in the instructions, so worth uh, knowing here, of course. Okay, I grab my torque wrench and torque these guys down. In the instructions, it recommends to torque these down to 25 foot-pounds, so that's what we'll do. When it comes time to install the bell housing, there's two ways of doing it. So the way I'm going to do is by using these little tiny dowel pins. So there's holes all the way around to locate these. The whole point of it is that your bell housing is going to line up on those dowel pins. That's the easy way of doing it. There's another way of doing it. You need a dial indicator and a couple Magnetic base, there it goes to everything you needed. So you basically do not put the dowels in. You put the bell housing in loosely, and then afterwards you use the shaft to indicate in the, the, the round, basically, of the bell housing to try to get it as, as true as possible. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna use the little dowel pins, but I'll show you basically um, how you would do it if uh, you were to use the, uh, the other method. So the way I'm installing them is uh, I'm simply clip it with uh, a, a pair of uh, needle nose vice grips. And then when I hammer it in and the amount of stick out is the same amount as the vice grip, that's when I stop. Okay, if this doesn't make sense to you, uh, it's about two in a second. So all these pins are going to locate on the inside of this bell housing. There we go. So it's that simple. Now this is the method without the dial indicator. So if you were to use the dial indicator, you would not use the pins and then you would use the shaft to indicate on the inside of the bell housing to make sure everything's nice and straight. I'm wondering if there's a way of doing it with even just a caliper. Nope. Nope, unfortunately not because the caliper ends up being too long. But uh, if you had a dial indicator with a magnetic base, clamp it onto here, rotate the shaft, and just indicate 
on the inside here. So you want it to get, um, the, the instructions suggest you want to get them roughly into the two, one to two thou or better. Um, I think it'd be pretty achievable. You just have to leave your bolts loose and then you'd be able to kind of shimmy it around with uh, either a hammer or a mallet, piece of wood, something. So anyways, that's the two methods of doing it. Now the reason I did this backwards is because I wanted to help indicate in uh, where the two holes are going to go because you have to keep in mind this also goes in here. Uh, it doesn't fit right now because this hose is there but this also fits in here and two holes have to be drilled in the side here somewhere so I want to just to visually have a confirmation of where it's going to be before I start drilling holes in the other side to make sure nothing was just right up the lunch. Okay so the instructions also tell you where to drill this thing so it's pretty simple when you take the time to just look at it for two seconds. So I'll go over it quick with you guys and then I'll get into drilling. So I know that one was going to line up in reference to this bolt and the other one was going to line up right here. So then I use the instructions that says in line with the hole of the bolt, you go one and a half roughly, double check here. No, actually it's 1.3, so a little bit higher than my mark here. So 1.3 inches in line with the center of the bolt here. Then afterwards, from that point, you go 2.75 inches up and then 1.2 inches from the edge. So I know my other mark is there. Fortunately, I don't have a hole saw small enough, so I'm just gonna send the smallest one I got. Okay, that wasn't that bad. All right, and the other one I know is right here. Now we're going to double check that it fits properly. Well, at first glance, everything seems to fit pretty good, I must say. There's plenty of room in here. And then whatever operations I need to do right there, I'll be good to go. Bam. All right, so what we're gonna do here is go ahead and final assemble the bell housing bolts and double check our clearances with the, uh, the pilot bearing. There's a bit of an issue there. I'll show you guys in a bit. So we're gonna torque these down too. Um, I'm gonna to torque it to a number that I think is appropriate. The instructions don't say what to torque these guys at. I have a number in my head. I don't want to tell you wrong information. So my advice is just research it quick. Like what the bell housing torque specs are for 4L60E. Last little problem I have here is that the uh, pilot bearing for the input shaft doesn't fit. It's a little too tight. I don't really like that. So I'm just going to polish the shaft up a little bit just to try to get that Not the end of the world. Anyways, you get the gist of it. I'm gonna pull this guy off, work on the shaft a bit more, then I'll get back to you when it's said and done. Oh, you're still here. Well, whew. Man, it is hot here. We got her done. A little short one for you guys today. Uh, this is just the project that I had uh, on the go for right now. Now, if you were following the videos, you know I was working on an LS engine. What could that LS engine possibly be going into? I'm not sure. Ding, 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 ding. No, all jokes aside here, it's going on 007. So 007 is back, guys. We are working on it right now. The whole fire thing, that's all cleaned up. Ah, uh, thank God. The old engine's right there. That was pretty bad. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go ahead and check out this video. With that, that's going to conclude uh, this week's adventure. So uh, this week's, oh geez, this month's, I haven't posted in a little bit there. I apologize for that. Summer is pretty busy. But still, keep your eyes open. We're going to post videos as soon as we can. 
And we're gonna post a lot more videos about this guy coming up here pretty soon now that I actually have a transmission and an engine for it. Yeah, pretty sweet. But uh, yeah, your man Porter, we're gonna sign out for this one. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe. We are so close to a thousand subs. Oh my God, it is insane. So make sure you give me a hand on that one and we'll see you on the next one.